Chapter 7, Circular Motion. We're still in Section 1, and this is our last one, Part C. We're going to talk about inertia and its connection to circular motion. We are going to explain how the apparent outward force in circular motion can be explained as inertia resisting the centripetal force. Let's look at our ball on a string again. What happens if the string suddenly breaks? What direction will the ball travel? Will it go straight out, go in a curved path, and along the tangent, or will it curve in? When we're looking at this, we need to remember and think what direction the force is. So centripetal force is inward. So if that suddenly stops, where will that ball go? So what we need to do is think about what inertia says. Okay, things like to keep moving the way they are moving already, which means for a ball going in a circle, right, we have that tangential velocity here. That is the direction that ball is moving in that instant, but it's the centripetal force that causes it to change direction. So what that means is that ball will keep going in a straight line after this force ceases to keep acting on it. So this here, this line, the tangent velocity, is the direction the ball will move. Okay, so this is now the direction of motion. Direction of motion. Okay, when the string breaks. So this means anything in circular motion, anything that suddenly loses its centripetal force, causing it to change directions and travel in a circle, will travel in a straight line tangent to the curve, which is the direction of the tangential velocity. So let's look at a car now sliding on an icy road. This car comes around this corner, and its path would be to keep following the road here. But there's ice, and so it slides. So the direction of velocity at that time without the centripetal force, which is friction in this case, if we lose that centripetal force of friction due to ice, the car will now travel in a straight line path, which is its tangential velocity. So that will be the direction that it moves when it slides out. So these are just kind of some fun pictures that I found. Somebody was able to take a photograph and they have some uh, steel wool that they're burning. And you can notice they're spinning it here in this circular path. And as the sparks fly off, you can see that they're going in straight lines tangent to the direction of motion depending on where it is in the circle. So this is a really good example of how that tangential velocity um, is true when things fly off and they no longer have that centripetal force. So I have one more picture here just because it's pretty. And some of these, I want you to notice that close here, it is going in that tangential line. They're all traveling out. Here though, gravity is causing it to then curve. Okay, so that's gravity, not the path. The path right when it comes off, you can see all of them are coming up straight. These are just such pretty pictures and a great example of circular motion and what happens when you lose that centripetal force. So let's take a look at a roller coaster here. And I've got kind of like two positions and we're going to look at this one first. So many of you have probably been on a roller coaster. And when you're in that roller coaster, we've talked about how when things travel in circular paths, okay, and this roller coaster is a good example of a circular path, you know that the force of centripetal motion is towards the center. So if the force is in that direction, what is keeping you from falling out? Well, it turns out it has to do with your inertia. Okay, so your inertia wants you to keep moving this way. So your body's resisting that change in motion caused by the centripetal force. So inertia makes you want to move that way. And because you're constantly changing direction, and if you moved so that you were over here, your centripetal force would be in that direction. And so 
that constant change and your inertia resisting that change in motion is actually what keeps you in this seat. And it feels like, if you've ridden one, you know you feel like you're being pushed that way. But really that sense of being pushed is just inertia. So the same thing happens when you're on side, right? The centripetal force is in that direction, but as you're going up, okay, your body wants to keep moving in that same direction. So even though the force is pulling you towards the center, you stay in your seat because of inertia. So inertia keeps you in your seat in a roller coaster. And it appears to act like a force, but it is not a force. Another example is also if you turn in your car. Have you ever noticed if you turn really fast, you want to slide and hit the wall? Okay, your inertia is what allows you to slide in a car, but then it's the wall of your car that supplies the centripetal force towards the center that then pulls you in the direction of motion as you go around a corner. So remember that that apparent force as you feel being pushed to the outside or being pushed into your seat in a roller coaster, those are not forces, those are inertia. The only force acting on you really is the force of gravity, but also the centripetal force that's causing you to move in a circular path. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in class.